Hello. For the very last time this season, you join us in our Warwickshire hideaway where we're about to inflict a very special form of torture on our teams. Our resident question setters are fiendish enough, but when listeners set the questions, they often come in from left field and throw the panel off the scent completely. And as it's the last programme of the series, all of the questions today are from our mailbag, uh, devised by you and sent to us over the past 12 months or so. Facing that challenge are the North of Ireland, represented by Paddy Duffy and Freya McClements, and the South of England pairing of Paul Sinner and Marcus Berkman. Welcome back to all of you. Uh, it was a listener, Robert Means, whose question we asked at the end of last week's programme. You might remember he gave you this sequence. J.R.R. R. Tolkien, The Postman, P.T. Barnum and a German car maker. And then he asked which gift would come next. Uh, well done if you got this. Rings were the key to it. Tolkien created... The one ring to rule them all in The Lord of the Rings. The postman always rings twice in the James M. Cain novel and the 1946 film noir. Barnum gave the world the three ring circus and a certain popular brand of German car has an instantly recognisable emblem involving four rings. Next in the order, therefore, are five gold rings given by the true love uh, in the Christmas song. So, Northern Ireland, it's your turn to go first and you have Martin Burzins in Kettering to uh, thank for this or to blame for it. Why would the continued survival of Bookie Bill, Speedy Graham and the comedian Alfred Hawthorne remind you of Maria in Austria? Why would the continued survival of Bookie Bill, Speedy Graham and the comedian Alfred Hawthorne remind you of Maria in Austria? Well, Speedy Graham immediately took me to the Formula One world champion of 1962 and 68 and also the father of uh, Damon and the grandson actually of Josh, the sort of real racing dynasty, Graham Hill. You've, uh, got, the, you've got the right Speedy Graham. And from there we go, the bookie Bill will be William Hill. Absolutely. And Alfred Hawthorne. Uh, Another comic doctor, uh, Harry Hill. No? No. Ah. Mm. Well, well, we come back to him. Because Let's come back, yeah. When we go then to Maria in Austria, so we're thinking immediately this is the sound of music and the hills are alive, the famous song, obviously, from that. Yeah. So hence the continued sur survival because the hills are alive. Yes, exactly. So, but you've, you've just... So another, a, 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 a comedian hill... We've, uh, is, is this a comedian from the uh, core blaming Mrs. Brown sort of pre-war sort of era or something like that? Al Alfred Hawthorne sounds like quite a... An, it is quite an old-fashioned. No, he's not name. particularly... I mean, he's uh, very big in the 60s and even... Benny Hill, is it? Benny, Benny Hill. Yes. Those are the first two names of Benny Hill. Yeah. So, why would the continued survival of Bookie Bill, Speedy Graham and comedian Alfred Hawthorne remind you of Maria in Austria? Uh, she would be singing The Hills Are Alive and the continued survival would have been of William Hill, Graham Hill and Benny Hill. It was just a tiny stumble, uh, a cruel stumble in a way, because Harry Hill would have been a perfectly legitimate answer uh, in this question, but you did stumble, so I'm going to take one point off you for that, uh, Northern Ireland. So that's five points. So, Paul and Marcus, uh, this question comes from Matt Underwood. Why might an energetic prankster drummer, a former UN diplomat and a mighty comic character, fear drowning in a dystopian author's favourite watering hole? Why might an energetic prankster drummer, a former UN diplomat and a mighty comic character, fear drowning in a dystopian author's favourite watering hole? Uh, well, the energetic prankster drummer... That uh, has to be Keith Moon. Um, it does. I'm sure there are other pranks to drummers are available, I'm, but that's I'm, the one they I'm want. I'm sure there are. And Diplomat seems a slightly underplayed way to describe the former Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon. Uh, he is what we're looking for. Yeah. Um, and um, the mighty comic character we'll leave aside for a moment, uh, because we're not sure, but the uh, dystopian author must be George Orwell. It is. And Why must it be? Um, because George Orwell, was about, he talked about the ideal pub in one of his essays. And um, the, the, the pub was called The Moon Underwater. It was much, indeed, yeah. Much used by J.D. Weatherspoons in a, in a 
It's a very common name for a Weatherspoon's pearl with the moon underwater. Um, so, yes, the mighty comic character is the only thing missing. Well, there here. was a mighty mouse, but I don't think the mighty mouse would have a mighty alter- mouse. It's not mighty moon, is it? I mean, no, it, no. no. It, but is it the mighty atom? No. Oh. Hmm. More recent, this. Uh, it's um, the mighty moon. No, it's not that. Um, You're not fans of Julian Barrett and Noel Fielding? Oh, the, the mighty boosh. The mighty boosh, and there's a... Never no. seen it, never watched it. <laughs> moon face? No, well, there is, there is in fact a character in the mighty boosh who looks like the moon, has a sort of catchphrase, everybody look at the moon, but in fact we're looking for Howard Moon. Oh, God, of Which is the name of uh, the character oh, that oh, is played by... Julian, Julian Barrett. Barrett plays a sort of zookeeper and oh, adventurer. Gosh, I'm so ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're going to have to make your apologies the next time you bump into them. Um, mm. uh, why might an energetic prankster drummer, uh, Keith Moon, a former UN diplomat, Bang Ki Moon, and a mighty comet character, Howard Moon, uh, in The Mighty Boosh, fear drowning in a dystopian author's favourite watering hole because uh, George Orwell's imaginary perfect pub was called the moon underwater you only had a problem at the end there with uh with howard moon i think we can give you i think i can give you five for that south of england it may be a little generous but hey it's the last program of the series <laughs> so uh time for a music question and and, and sound question for and paddy this idea has come from joe Hulihan in toronto listen to the following clips and answer this what is the point? Sweets for my sweet, sugar for my honey. Your first sweet kiss thrills me so. Sweets for my sweet, sugar for my honey. I'll never ever let you go. International cricket needs England, India, Australia and the West Indies. Those four countries, you need to be strong. Um, the wrestle, obviously, it's it's a bonus that they're strong too. But they're the four major countries you need playing. I think India for what they bring to the table, Australia, England clashes, and the West Indies for their colour and the, just the way they play the game. It's exciting. So, and that keeps the public and everyone entertained. Northern Ireland, um, having heard those, you've got to answer this question. What is the point? A question that round Britain quiz teams have often asked themselves, but well, it's indeed. very pertinent in this case. Let it be known that Mr. Houlihan is a perverse man. <laughs> um, so it's Sweet for My Sweet was the was the first song, and I'm racking my brain as to who actually did that. I think it's the Hollies out of my head that it was the Hollies. It's not. Anywhere. Manfred Mann? No. And I'm afraid you do need to know the performers. We need to right. know the performers. Uh, yeah, they've gone right down my head momentarily. Now, what I know about cricket would need to be recovered with some sort of uh, massive telescope. You've admitted this um, in a previous program, mm, but you then got the question right. I d- so, yes. Mm, no, um, not, not through our cricket knowledge, <laughs> yeah. though, which is uh, well, basically, lacking. Basically, un- unless it's Shane Warren, I am fashnicked. <laughs> oh, why not have a go? Is it Shane Warren? It's Shane Warren. Oh, fantastic. Okay, great. Oh, that's good. A little knowledge, a little learning sometimes is useful. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, the third... The third uh, track sounds familiar, sort of sounds familiar for the like, incidental music for, for something or other. It sounded like Django Reinhardt. It is Django Reinhardt. It is Django Reinhardt. Do we need to know the name of the nope. title? Oh, that's useful. Nope. You've useful. got everything you need. So we've got uh, Django. What is the point? Django Reinhardt. Oh, hold on a minute. What is the point? Is, is this something to do with um, the, the tips of fingers or something? No. No. So we've got Shane Warren. We've got Django Reinhardt. It's a good dinner party, if nothing else. And after that, 
I just can't for the life of me think who wrote who did Sweets for My Sweet. Sim- similar bands to the and then yeah so it's so it felt, 1960s yeah, it felt so think of similar similar uh, it's not Herman's Hermits band. it's not the Tremolos no um, it's appropriate that you're casting around and on a hunt here mm. hunt okay um, the Seekers very close Searchers the Searchers the Searchers Searchers, searchers. Mm-hmm. now I wonder if you can spot anything that Oh, I, what's the point? Uh, yes, the um, westerns. Very good. Westerns, the Searchers, uh, Django, Django and Shane, Shane, the the John Wayne film. Right. Does that give you any help with that final piece of music? No. Let's uh, let's cast through. So um, western. The um, John Wayne and the Cowboys. John, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that amazing yeah, it's not band. Ha- yeah, it's not hazy fantasy, yeah. is it? It's. Um, Oh God, I'm trying to think of the. Um... I'm not sure we're going to have time to go through the entire. No, Western yeah, I'm film sort of going. Oh, go on. <laughs> um, um, it's, John Ford. It's a 1958 William Wyler film starring Gregory Peck. Um, that's the, big the Big Country. Gregory Peck is the Big Country. Big Country, of course, it's Big there. Country. I was just about to hand it over to oh. Mark as he was squirming with anxiety <laughs> to tell you what the God, answer was, but you me. got there in front of him. Well done. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> So, what is the point? The point is the all compass all point all is is west. 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 <clears throat> because we played you the Searchers, Sweets for My Sweet, the voice of Shane Warne uh, in a Five Live interview, Django Reinhardt, a track called Double Whiskey, and Big Country, a track called Chance. Uh, we were looking for the names of famous westerns: the Searchers, Shane, Django, and the Big Country. Took you a while there. But you did get quite a lot of those elements. So I certainly think we can give you uh, four for that Northern Ireland. So Paul and Marcus, this question comes from Paul Slade, another regular question setter for us. Moscow's leading cultural export, some primrose ankle wear, a popular filling for a sandwich, the instrument of a bebop hero and an actor from a circus family who died in a car crash in Birkenhead. Why could these, among others, have improved your mood in the summer of 1979? Moscow's leading cultural export, some primrose ankle wear, a popular filling for a sandwich, the instrument of a bebop hero, and an actor from a circus family who died in a car crash in Birkenhead. Why could these, among others, have improved your mood in the summer of 1979? Well, unusually, we've got the connection first. Yes. Um, the connection's going to help you a lot here, actually, well, depending if, on your memory. If I was well, fi- uh, at which point I wish I was five years older. <laughs> yeah. um, but the, the connection is that these are reasons to be cheerful, Ian Jury. They are, yes. Um, so um, I could, uh, Moscow's leading cultural export is the Bolshoi Ballet. Um, it is. Popular filling for a sandwich is cheese and pickle, isn't it? It is. Oh, thank God for that. Uh, cheddar, um, cheddar cheese and pickle specifically, cheese but I'm not going to make you okay. name the cheese. I'm trying to re- remember the lyrics. Um, after that, we're struggling. The bebop, in, instrument of a bebop hi- hi- hero. Is that Charlie Parker's saxophone? No. Damn. Coltrane? John Coltrane's. John Coltrane's um, saxophone. Soprano. Soprano. Is the line that's actually used in the song. John right. Coltrane's soprano. Didn't know that. Um, and then we're really then we're really struggling. primrose ankle wear uh, yellow mm. shoes no yellow um, socks. socks yellow socks yellow, yellow socks, socks. Um. <laughs> and I will be astounded if you get the actor from the circus family who died in a car crash in Birkenhead um, is it you I'm pretty Brina? sure that um, that almost nobody who listened to that Ian Dury track knew who this was what's the name Bonar Colino oh <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fair to say that six was always going to be out of reach. <laughs> Unless you're an I thought that was a very efficient. tough question, and you started really well on it. You, uh, it, it was a, a real leap to get to the theme, but it, uh, slightly naughtily, we picked them from different parts of the lyrics, so you couldn't even have that business of it singing in your head to help you. But Moscow's leading cultural export was the Bolshoi Ballet, yellow socks with a primrose ankle wear popular filling for a sandwich cheddar cheese and pickle the instrument of a bebop hero john coltrane soprano 
and the actor from the circus family who died in a car crash at Bonart Galino. Uh, all of them mentioned in that uh, track, Reasons to be Cheerful, a big hit in 1979. I think I had to nudge you heftily a couple of times there, so we can give you four for that, um, South of England. Uh, so, Northern Ireland. Uh, this question has come from another regular uh, RBQ contributor, Roland Howell from Darlington. Why might Snoopy's nemesis feel comfortable in the company of a letter of shame, a cocktail named after the heroine of an epic film, and a biblical female associated with pagan Rome? Why might Snoopy's nemesis feel comfortable in the company of a letter of shame, a cocktail named after the heroine of an epic film, and a biblical female associated with pagan Rome. Well, Snoopy has many nemeses, nemesi, not not sure um, what the correct terminology there is, but uh, the one that we're going to go for is the Red Baron. You've gone for the right we one. We think yeah. is the one that we're looking for here. Uh, and uh, the reason that the Red Baron would feel comfortable in the company of the Letter of Shame, the Letter of Shame is the Scarlet Letter, the Scarlet A um, from, from Hawthorne's novel. And uh, well, when it comes to a heroine from an epic film, and since we're in that range, it must only be Scarlett O'Hara. It is Scarlett O'Hara, yeah. Now, the question is, we're trying to think of a someone associated with Scarlett in yeah, biblical... In, in pagan Rome. We can sort of, so uh, we, we feel we're looking for something in the red, scarlet, crimson sort of shade. You are, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So she's known as, she's known as a... As a a scarlet woman, that's how she's described. Scarlet Mar- woman like Mar- is the... Mary Magdalene is or something. the phrase we're looking for. Well, no, it's not Mary Magdalene. It's the... Uh, it's the Whore of Babylon. Ah. Named at the end of Revelations. The mother of harlots. The abomination of the earth. Mm-hmm. Also, the, the scarlet woman. Mm-hmm. So, why might Snoopy's nemesis feel comfortable in the company of a letter of shame? Snoopy's nemesis, um, in, in his imagination at least, was the Red Baron... Uh, who he fought from the top of his kennel. Uh, the letter of shame was the Scarlet Letter, the Scarlet Letter A for adulteress in the Hawthorne novel. The cocktail is the Scarlet O'Hara, two parts whiskey, one part freshly squeezed lime juice, two parts cranberry juice, all shaken up with ice. Sounds good. Um, and finally, the biblical female associated with pagan Rome is the scarlet woman who appears in the book of Revelation, chapter 17. I, I think I, I, Didn't say I, can't, conviction. <laughs> I can't dock you, I don't think, for, for confessing that you weren't exactly sure why it was scarlet woman. You got the right answer. Yeah. So I think we'll give you um, six for that, Northern <laughs> Ireland. So, South of England, it's time for your music question. This one's come from Peter Gibbons. How did the following help pull off an unprecedented triple victory in 2018? Help pull off an unprecedented triple victory in 2018. 
Well, well, well. I wish we knew what the name of the title of the first one was. Um, but the second, the second one is uh, the Chain by Fleetwood Mac. It is, yeah. The third one is um, Wheels on Fire by Brian Auger and Julie Driscoll. I think it is. Uh, it is, yes. And the fourth one is Jessica by the Allman Brothers. It is. Which leaves, but that is also the theme to Top Gear. Yes. Uh, which leaves the unprecedented triple victory being the extraordinary triumph of three different British cyclists in winning Grand Tours uh, in 2018. Simon Yates, uh, Chris Froome and Geraint Thomas. And chain, wheel and gear um, being part of a cyclist. So, by, OK, by, so can uh, you get the final bit of the bike? That rather bloodless honky-tonk at the top, I know. you didn't recognise it. Um, it's not Winifred Atwell, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, saddle? No, no, it's... It is the saddle. It is the saddle? Yes, it is the saddle, but do you know why? Um, because um, the word saddle is in the... Th- <laughs> oh, <well>, yeah. <laughs> is in either the I title or the name I of don't the think game. you're going to get this. It, 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 that was uh, a piece by Russ Conway oh. called Side Saddle, oh, right. in fact. I wouldn't have got that. So we played you Russ Conway's side saddle, Fleetwood Mac, The Chain, uh, uh, Auger and Driscoll, This Wheel's on Fire, and the Allman Brothers, uh, Jessica, which is the theme from Top Gear. I think Mr. Peter Gibbons probably thought you were going to be steer the wrong direction in, in, towards more motorsport, but you dodged that. You saw that it was all about um, the unprecedented triple victory of um, British cyclists in 2018, uh, the Giro d'Italia, the Tour de France, and the Vuelta a España. So you did beautifully on that. I think only one point can come off for that, not knowing the uh, the first piece of music there and not getting that element of it. Uh, five points to you. Uh, Northern Ireland, you're only one point ahead, and we've come to the final two questions, so um, it's not over yet. Uh, this question has been sent to us by Juha Sorva in Finland. Whose enemies might have cause to fear the Nike logo, Duncan Jones, the son of a salesman, a captured soldier and one of a pair of garments. Whose enemies might have cause to fear the Nike logo, Duncan Jones, the son of a salesman, a captured soldier and one of a pair of garments? So uh, shine and light on the magic of it. What happens here in OBQ? Sometimes when we go for dinner after recording these, uh, it does get quite testy once we uh, figure out you know who's uh, you know going through the questions and everything and uh, Stuart McConey dresses up as the Joker and uh, laughs as we uh, as we all let loose around us right you're hinting I think this you're is by right means yes this. This, this is by means of saying that uh, we think all these things are actions performed in the campy 60s version of Batman just explain a little more. So, 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 so the so starting at the end, one pe- one of a pair of garments would be sock, like you would have seen on the screen, you know, with the uh, the captured soldier P O W prison war POW. Um, the son of a salesman, so salesman is capitalized, so that brought us immediately to, to Ari Miller and death of a salesman, and he has a son called Biff! Exclamation mark. Yep. Uh, then the, uh, the 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 Nike logo is the swoosh. And then Duncan Jones, we looked at that for a while and then we realised that while David Bowie had a great many talents, name in his wains wasn't one of them. And so Duncan Jones was initially known as Zoe Bowie or sometimes as would come up Zowie. Zowie. Um, absolutely right. Uh, lovely question and you've answered it perfectly. Uh, these, these are all onomatopoeias mm. uh, used in, uh, in Batman, uh, both in the comics and in the television version. The Nike logo was swoosh. Duncan Jones was Zowie uh, or Zoe. The son of a salesman was Biff. The captured soldier was POW or POW. And one of a pair of garments was Sock. Whose enemies might have cause to fear them all? Batman's enemies or Batman and Robin's enemies. Six points. So, South of England, uh, they have not left the door open for you. Uh, but you can it still. It wouldn't have mattered anyway. You can still anyway. do well on this <laughs> final question. This one. this one comes to you from a uh, listener, Mark Node. What is odd about a park in Honor Oak, South East London, a notorious nuclear power station, a World Heritage coastline in Liguria, a part of London notorious for poverty in the 19th century, and a cool shopping area of Amsterdam? What's odd about a park in Honor Oak, 
South East London, a notorious nuclear power station, a World Heritage coastline in Liguria, a part of London notorious for poverty in the 19th century, and a cool shopping area of Amsterdam. Once more, we have the connection. But not necessarily the answers. <laughs> OK, well, I'm, um, impre- I'm I mean, impressed the, that you've got the connection. The, the way in is um, a notorious nuclear power station. There are two notorious power, nuclear power stations, but the one in Chernobyl doesn't lend itself to conceptual connections, whereas the one in Three Mile Island uh, does. Yes, you've got the right one. I know now that we're in a future re- um, series of Round Britain quiz. We're going to get a conceptually linked question about Chernobyl. <laughs> you have set a challenge to the listeners, to which they, I am sure, will rise. And um, Three Mile Island is, contains the word three, which is the second odd number. So we are um, positing that these are one, three, five, seven, and nine in order. They are, but why? Now, um, you have to do a little bit more than so, that. So um, the, the part of London notorious for poverty, is that the Seven Sisters by each other? It's not, sorry. It's not, oh, it's not it's seven, seven, seven Dials. Seven Dials. Seven Dials, yes. Oh, right. That's the... So we, we've slandered Seven Sisters and perhaps we should apologise. Um, the other three, we don't know. Um, Except that there is a co- there is an S area of coastline in Liguria um, that's named for five places on that coastline. It is. So the English translation of the name is something like five cities, five villages, five towns. You, five... you don't know the Italian original? No. No. Cinque Terre. It's the five territories, the five. five okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Five lands. And then, shamefully, given that I lived uh, near Onoroke uh, for four years of my life, I cannot remember the name of a park in Onoroke. A one... I know that this sounds a bit odd, given that it's a US TV show, but One Tree Hill? You've got it. It was there all along. Um, Woof, woof. That's amazing. (laughs) Well played. So you're only missing the cool shopping area of Amsterdam. I suspect it begins with the word nine... (laughs) <laughs> it does but beyond that we cannot go yeah okay well you've gone quite far considering uh, that you thought you were struggling at the beginning I'm tempted to give you an, an odd number of points here. <laughs> but then but then three seems to me too small and, and five a little bit too much I think I think four is reasonable um, so the park in Honor Oak was One Tree Hill the good. notorious nuclear power station was Three Mile Island the World Heritage Coastline in Liguria is the Cinque Terre, um, five villages along the coastline there, clinging to the, the hills. Part of London, notorious for poverty in the 19th century, was Seven Dials, now very fashionable. And the cool shopping area of Amsterdam was the Nine Streets. Oh. Nine uh, Streets. I didn't know that. So that's the end of today's contest and indeed the end of the series. The final score in this match is Northern Ireland 21 to the south of England's 18 and therefore obviously north of Ireland are the winners. So overall that means that the north of England are the series champions with three wins and only one lost. Interestingly uh, a big band of teams below them south of england wales northern ireland and the midlands all on two wins and two losses three of those teams actually scored more points than the north of england but uh, we do it on uh, game wins and scotland uh, won one and lost three Uh, i'd like to thank and congratulate all of our six teams for their feats of intellect uh, this season thank you to everyone who sent in question ideas i'm sorry we don't have room to include even more of them in each series we'll be storing up your suggestions for next year and using the best of them when we come back in 2020 you can email them at any time of the year to rbq at bbc.co.uk And thanks to our team of expert question setters, Stephen Follows, Beth Porter and Mark Mason. Until we meet next year, from all of us here, goodbye.